Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. My name is Michael Evangelista and I will be your moderator for today. Just a few reminders that you are in listen-only mode to avoid unnecessary background noise. However, you can type in your questions anytime you want and those questions will be answered by a panelist in a Q&A segment. The recording and certificate for this webinar will be sent out in two days time for those who completed the webinar. And our topic for today is about why and how to interpret polarization index in the electric absorption ratio. Uh, this is a pre-recorded webinar and it was presented by yours truly. So without any further ado, let's start the webinar, Grace. And welcome to this webinar. My name is Michael Evangelista and I will be your presenter for today. Um, today's topic is about why and how to interpret the polarization index or the PI and the dielectric absorption ratio or the DAR. Um, just a few reminders, by the way, that you are in listen only mode, but anytime you can type in your questions in the chat box if you have questions, and we're going to answer that by the end of the presentation. The recording of this webinar, including the certificate, will be sent out in two days' time. So let's start this webinar. So again, as I've said, the topic is about the, the polarization index and the electric absorption ratio. For the agenda and or the content of this webinar, we will be discussing about insulation testing. Just a review. I, I believe you already heard a lot of webinars regarding the insulation testing. So just, just a review so we better understand this polarization index and the dielectric absorption ratio. Of course, some uh, short review about uh, things that can make our insulation bad. And the different disinsulation tests, as you have seen in our test equipment. The common DC test voltage, what are the uh, applied voltage in doing the DC insulation resistance test. And also, the most important part is the understanding the components of the current measured. It is really, really uh, important to understand what are those current, what are the components of those current that we are measuring, and what is the important part that we need to to measure. And also, um, uh, because I want to compare the polarization index with the spot reading test, so we will be discussing shortly about the spot reading test. And so we go to the main topic, the polarization index and the electric absorption ratio. So I will be giving also um, an example of, uh, of a test and how uh, to analyze them. Okay. So to review first, basically this insulation testing or this, this insulation testing is basically from the Ohm's law. And we all know that the voltage is equals to current times the resistance. And since we are getting the insulation resistance, so we have the R here, is equals to voltage divided by the current. So we know that the resistance is directly proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to the current. So meaning if I want to measure higher resistance, because that is directly proportional to voltage, so I need a higher voltage. and during measurement, if I've got a high current, meaning I will have a low resistance feeding because that is inversely proportional. Please take note of that. So in ideal world, uh, there is a perfect insulation, but in reality, we don't have perfect insulation. No insulation is perfect and no insulation has infinite resistance. We have some uh, elect electricity flow or leak along the insulation through the ground. And such current may only be a million of an ampere or one microamp. So it's a very small magnitude of current because it's just a leak. And this leakage current is the basis for the insulation testing equipment. This is what we are looking for. This will define, this leak leakage current will define how our insulation is doing, 
how good is our insulation. And when we say good insulation, that means we have a relatively high resistance. And by describing an insulating material good, that means that insulation has the ability to keep a high resistance, no matter uh, how much voltage you injected, no matter how much voltage it experienced or it has. So the ability of keeping its high resistance is a quality of a good uh, insulating material. But over time, uh, we cannot avoid these enemies of insulation. Insulations are, 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 are not the things that we install and forget. We have so many enemies for insulation. You have the mechanical damage, you have the vibration, you have the excessive heat or cold, you have the dirt or oil, you have corrosive vapors, you have moistures from processes, and even the humidity on a muggy day. It will make our insulation bad. And over time, all insulation will fail because of the mechanical stress, electrical stress, and even the pollution in the environmental or environmental stress. So if we don't do anything, if we don't detect this deterioration, what will happen? Of course, it will increase the possibility of electrical shock or worse, death of a personnel. Also, it increases in the possibility of electrically induced fires. And of course, the expected lifetime of your equipment will be lessened. It will reduce the age. It will increase the aging of your equipment if you don't detect this deterioration. And the most uh, costly things that will happen is the unscheduled downtime. So when we say good insulation, again, we, we are talking of high resistance. And when we say poor insulation, that is a relatively low resistance. And actual resistance values can vary higher or lower depending on the factors such as temperature and the moisture content of the insulation. We know that the temperature can affect the insulation. The resistance of insulating material decreases markedly with an increase in temperature. And one rule of thumb is for every 10 degrees Celsius increase in temperature, it will have the resistance. Or for every 10 degree in decrease in temperature, that will double the resistance. Please take note of that. So to make reliable comparison between readings, because the best way for you to analyze the results of the insulation resistance is to do historical trending, meaning you compare test one to test two, which happened at different times, of course, and then you do the plotting or you, you plot the curve, see what is happening. And of course, the, the ideal is it should be uh, identical or flat, flat curve. But if something happened between times, for example, it drops down substantially. And that means you have, it may, uh, it may be a result of something uh, catastrophic something bad. So in order for you to have this trending, you need to have a uniform base. That's why you need to correct each reading to 20 degrees Celsius. You need to have a base at 20 degrees Celsius. If you're going to compare things, you need to have a base. And that base for this insulation resistance is the 20 degrees Celsius. So that is how you do the interpretation of the spot reading test. So each time of insulating material will have a different degree of resistance change with temperature. And factors have been developed to simplify the correction of resistance values, that is the temperature correction factor tables, which is available for different uh, types of apparatus and types of insulating material. And since this is a review, uh, actually you can uh, have more details about it when you review the other webinars regarding the insulation that was conducted by, or that were conducted by, uh, uh, Jeff Johet.
and also there are, there are some materials like the uh, stitch in time and the the one kb this insulation testing and those are the application notes that will give you more information about the effect of this temperature so when doing the insulation test it could be go or no go meaning if you found out that the insulation has contamination if it, if it has a fatal installation or maintenance error and it has a serious degradation then you can decide right away if you can you could put it back in service or not you can also do diagnostic tests and this diagnostic test will give you more information from the from the response of the insulation so for me i guess better to do if uh, if for example your insulation passed the go or no go test then you do the diagnostic test for better view or for better information of your of the condition of your insulation so why we do this diagnostic insulation testing of course uh, it is a trend towards predictive maintenance when we say predictive maintenance we are looking forward what will happen uh, with regards to your insulation so meaning we can predict if we are going to do maintenance work if we are going to do uh, a testing and by that it will lessen the fixed uh, maintenance interval the fixed time for maintenance interval because when we do predictive maintenance then we are looking at the actual condition of your insulation and by doing so you can predict your yeah you know uh, the future or you can predict what you can predict ahead of time what will happen so remember the two key rules for an effective maintenance program if you test periodically under the same uh, condition you you do keep records of the test for comparison so test periodically under the same condition that is number one and you keep the records of the test for comparison and what is an insulation tester so it is a portable instrument that gives a direct reading of insulation resistance in ohm and a high range uh, resistance meter or ohmmeter with a built-in dc current generator uh, and it will enables you uh, enables ohms to be read directly independently of the actual voltage applied so insulation testing um, how does an insulation tester operate? So the generator develops a high DC voltage which causes a small current through and over the insulation being tested. And this current is measured by the ohmmeter and indicate, indicated on the scale. Uh, in this diagram, you can see the typical insulation hookup. So uh, as you can see here, normally we put the negative to the high voltage side or the conductor in this example uh, for example this is a cable and the positive on the outside sheet of the cable or the shield of the cable See here and the purpose of this guard is if uh, if the insulation that you're going to test has the surface leakage then that could be considered by this guard so that could be eliminated from the computation so that will make your computation uh, more accurate. So to understand more about this guard, you can review the, the webinar that we had for the terminal, for the guard terminal. And these are some recommended test voltage per equipment, equipment rating. So in this table here, uh, you can see up to 100 volts, then the DC test voltage could be 100 to 250 volts. And if you have 440 to 550 AC volts rating of your equipment, then you can test it by injecting 500 to 1,000 1, volts. And based on my experience, if you injected more than that or more, more than that recommendation there, you will hear some sounds from that insulation if you injected more test voltage. And according to the NETA standard, we have this uh, recently, uh, I mean, uh, latest table, the table 100.1, .1, which, 
wherein on the leftmost column, you have the nominal rating of the equipment in volts. And then the middle column will indicate the minimum test voltage you should inject when doing the test for these ratings. And on the rightmost column, you will see the recommended or the minimum insulation resistance in mega ohms. And this is from the NETA standard. And I guess uh, this is uh, free to download. You, you can see that uh, easily in the internet. Okay. So for insulation testing interpretation, insulation resistance reading should be considered relative. So again, like I've said, it is um, best if we can do trending of historical data, as you can see in the picture here. So if something happened uh, over time or in between times or between tests, then you will clearly see that, uh, you know, it will be obvious that the uh, uh, there's something happen in your installation. And we can evaluate the trend of readings over time and we, uh, we, we will be given information or warnings of the problems. Also, readings should be taken the same way each time. So same temperature, that's why we need to correct it into 20 degrees Celsius, for example. Then we can record and factor relative humidity, of course. And we must do it same time interval for spot reading test. If we're going to do the spot reading test, then we need to do it in an interval with time interval. Now, um, let's go to the components of the current that is measured. So the total current is the sum of these three components. Number one is the capacitive charging current. So this capacitive charging current happens in a few in the first few seconds, so it's it's very fast because we treat insulation as capacitor because we have uh, insulation or conductor conductor two conductors and in between of them we have this dielectric and so we treat it as capacitor. So this capacitance charging current happens uh, rapidly. Uh, it happens to charge the capacitance. And so uh, we call it capacity and charging current. And we also have this absorption current or the polarization current. So this absorption current is during the time when the molecules or the dipoles or the electrons is uh, are aligning. So they are moving. And the most important with our of these three components is the conduction or the leakage current. Again, this is what we are looking for. These are constant currents. And so uh, this is the most important current or the, the most important component of the, of the three components. Now, to better understand it, let me show you this diagram here of an electrical insulation. So for example, I have a copper wire. And of course, I have a conductor which is maybe connected to the ground or the shield of the cable, for example. Uh, or if we make this as a as a motor, this is the motor frame, and this is the copper wire of the motor or the winding of the motor. And of course, in between of these conductors is insulation. That's why it is obvious that it is a capacitor. Of course. In that insulation, it, it is composed of molecules or dipoles and electrons, of course. And when an AC voltage is applied into it, what will happen? What do you think? Because this AC voltage is oscillating, of course, what will happen? These electrons will move also. Nowhere to go. No, no constant moving, but they are, I mean, they are moving but not in a constant direction. And of course, the dipoles will rotate or twist something like this because uh, we injected or we applied an AC voltage. This is the effect of the AC voltage in an insulation. Now, what if we applied a DC voltage? So you have the positive on the left-hand side and you have the negative on the right hand side. Okay? Of course, those electrons with the ne negatively charged 
will be attracted to positive. So it will go to the left-hand side. And when that happens, we call it capacitive charging current because those electrons are moving. So when we define current, that is a, a moving electron. So when it moves towards the positive side, so that's the time when we have this capacitive charging current. And again, it happens in the first few seconds of its large system, of course, it will happen in a minute, for example. And if these dipoles will be aligned or realigned, something like this, see the negative towards the positive side and then the positive charge towards the negative side, then that's what we call polarization. It became polarized. So it happened. Also, at the same time with the capacitive charging current, but it will take longer than the capacitive charging current. So also, the conduction current, if your insulation is deteriorated, that's the time the conduction current will flow, something like this. And again, that is the most important current. That is the current that we're looking for if we want to measure purely the leakage current. But sometimes if we have contamination with the outside surface of the insulation, then we can have a surface leakage current. So we have additional current here. And we all know that if we have a guard terminal, that could be eliminated. That could be um, not something like that with the computation of the total resistance by using the guard terminal. Okay, so that is happening. So when we look at the magnitude over time graph, so we have y-axis as the magnitude of the current and the x-axis as the time. So when we have this capacitive charging current happens, so you can see here, in a short period of time, but in high magnitude, there is a current, what we call capacitive charging current. And at the same time, if these dipoles align, we call it absorption or polarization current. So it's um, a little less than the capacitive charging, but it happens longer than the capacitive charging current. And when we have this conduction current because of the de deteriorated insulation, so as you can see here, there's no end for the conduction current. It will be forever as long as you have this deteriorated insulation. So over time, it will be infinite. See here? So you have a moving electron, then you have a conduction current. And if you have contamination and you miss to clean it till dirty, for example, you remain it dirty, then you have the surface leakage. So adding up the capacitive current and the absorption current, then you have this purple line here, the total current for the capacitive and absorption current. And if you add up the conduction, conduction current, then you can have it here. But remember, the capacitive charging will only happen on the first few seconds, and the absorption current will only happen in the first maybe uh, one minute. And the only... So the only current that will remain is the leakage current or the conduction current here. So if you have contamination, of course, your current will be a little bit higher if you have contamination. Okay, so in, sum in summary, um, again, what we're looking is this conduction leakage current. So when we do the polarization index and the absorption current, we let this capacitance charging happen first. We let this absorption happen first. Then when they are gone, uh, or when they are uh, something like uh, saturated, for example, then you will have the pure leakage current. That is the what we're looking for when we do the polarization index. So insulation resistance readings, please take note that readings are time dependent. So a test starts during the, when you start the test, you have the capacitive current, in the first seconds and at one minute current is a combination of polarization and leakage current and after 10 minutes reading is mainly leakage current please take note also that current is temperature dependent um these are the selected test apparatus for example 
So, examples of low capacitance devices are the high voltage buses, you have the switch gears, you have the short cable runs, and you also have the small motors. An example of high capacitance devices, you have the large generator, you have the long cable runs, and the large motors. Now, these are the types of insulation resistance tests. The most uh, popular one is the spot reading test. This is the test of the 60 second as you, as, as you are familiar with. So we inject the DC voltage for 60 seconds and get the result. Also, this time resistance method is when we do the uh, comparison over time. But of course, in this presentation we will be dealing more of the dielectric absorption ratio, and which is also called the polarization index. So it just depends on the the time domain. And we have this multi voltage or step voltage test and the ramp voltage test. So these two, the multi voltage or step voltage test and the ramp voltage test, are somewhat uh, the same because these tests are based on the principle that. Uh, whatever voltage you injected, of course, the resistance should be identical or the same. So, for example, uh, it happens that in a certain test voltage, your resistance reading got, got so much low, then that means that insulation is having a problem or a voltage dependent. Okay, But again, like I've said, we will be talking more of the dielectric absorption ratio. And if you have our MIT or Mega Insulation Tester or the S1, then these are the dielectric absorption ratio and the polarization index. So the good thing with our equipment is that if you get this PI, then you can already have the dielectric absorption ratio. So the spot reading tests are these uh, test modes here, the IR and the IRT. So normally what we are doing is we inject voltage for 60 seconds. And then we get this value at, at the 60 second. So with the spot reading test, so a good test for apparatus with very small capacitance. This is good for uh, for apparatus with very small capacitance. And only a rough guide how good or bad your insulation is for capacitive equipment for first test. And for analysis of this spot reading test, you need to do the trending. So analysis of periodically recorded readings provide a better analysis for judging insulation condition. So yeah, that is the better way to analyze the spot reading test. Because you know, the spot reading test is only happening at 60 seconds. So meaning you need to compare that uh, on, the, on the previous test result because it should, yeah, it's just like this. It should have the same reaction, you know. Because, of course, if you test the same equipment, it should have the same capacitive charging current time. It should have the same absorption current. So you need to compare. okay? Because with the spot readings test, we are not sure yet if we already uh, don't have that capacitive charging and absorption current. That's why we need to compare with the same or with the previous test result. Time resistance method or polarization index and the electric absorption. What is it? Right? So PI and DAR are fairly independent of temperature and can give conclusive information without records of the past test. Meaning you don't have to trend it. You don't have you don't need the historical data. This is diagnostic insulation testing. And it is based on the absorption effect of good insulation compared to that of moist or contaminated insulation. When you have a good insulation, it will show a continual increase in resistance over time, 5 to 10 minutes. Okay. And these are the tests, the DAR and the PR. So with the polarization index, this is the ratio of 10-minute reading over the 1-minute reading. So it is the simplest implementation of the time resistance test for solid insulation. And the result is a pure number and can normally be considered independent of temperature since the thermal mass of the equipment being tested is usually so great that the overall cooling will take place during the 10 minutes of the test is negligible. So that means 
even if you injected voltage for 10 minutes, the temperature is is not changing or is negligible. That the temperature change is negligible. For example, I inject now, and then I waited for 10 minutes. Oh, the equipment is not cooling down. Okay, so it's independent of independent of temperature test. When there is no so much change in temperature, that is applicable. Okay. And with the DAR, for the dielectric absorption ratio, we are getting the 60 second value divided by the 30 second value. So if your insulation is good, like I've said, it is a continual increase in reading, in, in continual increase in resistance, if it is good. And if, uh, for example, it has moisture or contamination, then it could be something like this or a flat, flat curve after 60 seconds. It is also the simplest because it's also called as the polarization index. And the ratio of the two time resistance readings is a 60 second reading divided by the 30 second reading. And for the assessment, so you can refer to this table here. So for the DAR, um, it is excellent if you got a number of 1.6 and above. It is good if it is 1.4 to 1.6, then it is questionable if it is 1 to 1.25. Okay. So looking at the example here, uh, let's take a look at the polarization index of a good insulation. So here in my example, I got uh, 10 mega ohm at one minute value. And after 10 minutes, I got a 50 minute mega ohm. So meaning my resistance increased. So according to PI, that is 10 minute over one minute, then I have a ratio of five. And so, when I refer it to the table, that means my insulation above four. If you get above four, then that means your insulation is good. Okay. But you may ask me, why good? How come? Right? I know you will ask that. Now let's go back to my previous slides in discussion. Again, we have three components for current. We have the capacitance charging current. We have the absorption current. And we have the conduction or the leakage current. So again, looking at this insulation here, when we applied AC, then the molecule will move, then you have current. And you don't know where it goes because it's AC, it's oscillating. But when you apply the DC, then you can have the capacitive charging, you can have the absorption current, and you have the conduction current. But again, if you have a surface leakage, then you can have contamination, or you can you have uh, contamination, then you have you will have this current or contamination or the surface leakage current. Now, again, looking at the time diagram, we have the magnitude over time diagram. Capacitive charging current happens on the first few seconds, as you can see here, and the absorption current will happen maybe longer than the capacitive current but it goes down over time because that's the time when these dipoles aligned already and you have the conduction current and you have the contamination current or the surface leakage current and the total current when you when you add up that adding the conduction current you have this total current in the in the purple line here see here at this period of time, I got a level current, meaning I will only have a pure leakage current. This current from the capacitive charging and this current from the absorption current is no longer uh, is cannot is, is no longer available in in my reading. I I am only reading after ten minutes my leakage current. And of course, when when the uh, equipment is in service, that's the that's the real thing. That's what will happen. And if you have contamination with your insulation, then this current will be a little bit higher. Okay. So meaning, this result here, when when I have a small current, 
that is a good insulation because I don't have any contamination. But again, I have a, surface, a leakage current, which may be a tolerable one. But if I have contamination like moisture, dirt, for example, with my insulation, then this current will increase a little bit, the total current here. Because these two, the conduction current and the surface leakage current will add up. That's why I have a higher current here. And again, after 10 minutes here, I got a leveled current. No more effect from the charging current. No more effect from the absorption current. That's why I need this 10 minutes for my polarization index. So this is my summary again of the, uh, the component of the current. So that's the answer. How come? Why is it good? Because number one, it is more than five. And according to the table, it is good. Okay. So why good and how come? The answer is because at the start of the test, I have capacitive current, which I seen in the first second. And at one minute, current is a combination of polarization and leakage current. And after 10 minutes, reading is mainly leakage current. So at first, one minute, I got more current. So again, when we go back to the Ohm's law, if I have more current, I have less resistance, right? So more current, less resistance. But after 10 minutes, because I don't have the capacitive charging current, I don't have the absorption current, then that, that means I have less current, and that less current will give me high resistance value. But if, for example, I have moisture and dirt, this is an example of the questionable insulation then. So 10 minutes over one minute, I just got two, ratio of two. That's why if I have two, then the result is questionable. Meaning to say, if it is questionable, then I have to do more. I have to do another test. Maybe you can do tan delta test. Maybe you can do insulation power factor test. Or you can do AC. Or you can do the electric discharge test. So in this example, this is questionable. And how come? Again, at first I have capacitive. And after 10 minutes, that is gone. At second or at one minute, current is combination of polarization and leakage current. And at 10 minutes, Supposedly, I am expecting that it, that is only a leakage current. However, I have contamination. I have dirt. That's why I still got a low resistance reading after 10 minutes. That's why this example here or this graph here will show uh, shows that my insulation is questionable. Okay. So meaning I got more current, and when I have movement of electron that's constitute a current so if you have moisture you have a lot of movement of electrons so why we do this test a summary of my presentation so time resistance method this is if you want diagnostic testing this pi in dar is a must if you don't have past test result or historical data or if you have large system that a change in temperature is impossible meaning not impossible but you know it's negligible or the change in temperature over 10 minute period time is negligible so you can do this polarization index test and if you want to measure just purely leakage current so if you want to consider just purely leakage current then you must do or you do this pi or dar okay so that brings me to the end of this presentation so if you have any questions sir you can type in in the chat box and we'll answer it for you. So thank you so much for listening. And again, um, if you go to our website, you can see this guide, uh, a guide to diagnostic insulation testing above 1 kb. And all I said, uh, you can you can read it from here. Okay. So now let's go on to the uh, question and answer. Okay, guys, so that's the end of my presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, please write it now in the chat box and yeah, we'll answer it. Let's see if we have some questions here. Okay. 
one question here from Nico. While testing IR in high interference environment with a known electromagnetic and electrostatic field strength, should we start to apply at lower voltage or we can directly go to say 5 or 10 kb with filter mode? Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, this is a very good question, but um, I'm not sure Nito on the procedure if we go to uh, lower bo voltage first, then we go uh, stepping up the voltage to a higher voltage. But what I'm very sure of is that when you are doing insulation resistance test in a highly uh, or noisy environment, like maybe around 400 plus KB substations, right? So you will have a, a lot of noise, normally around uh, 4 milliamp noise. If uh, actually it's more on or uh, it depends on the capability of your insulation tester. For some high-end insulation tester like Megger, we do have filters. We, we do uh, rolling average filters because as we all know, noise can really affect the results of our readings, of our measurement. So what we do in order to uh, to reject the noise is we do filters. But as for the method of injecting low voltage to a high voltage, I'm not sure. But what I'm sure is that if we do step voltage test, we are doing filtering on every test that we do. Maybe if we do the step up test, so on the first step, we're already doing the, the filtration all the filtering and that is the most important when we encounter the interference it's 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 on the capability of the test instrument that can handle the, the noise the rejection noise rejection I mean. okay so uh, another test uh, another test another question uh, is an insulation Resistance test anything more than a contamination? Uh, the, the that is one of the uh, objective of uh, of insulation resistance testing, sir. So first, we can see uh, if our insulation has some contaminants. But of course, the main purpose is to check the quality of your insulation. Okay. So as I've said, we have a lot of enemies. When we are uh, in our insulation, we have uh, contaminants, you know, we have some voids, etc. So, for example, um, you know, what I mean, uh, the other reason for testing insulation is uh, to see the workmanship of your insulation or the quality of your insulation. Maybe there are some holes or some voids, you know, insulation tester can see that. Not only contaminant, but only, but also the workmanship of your uh, insulation, the quality of your insulation. Uh, another question. I cannot read, bro. Can, can you, because it's not complete in my view. Okay, I Michael, I will read for you. I cannot expand. Of you. Okay. The, the next question is, I think I think you already explained what procedure test DAR, what procedure test DAR. Yeah, yeah, it's in the presentation. It's uh, uh, 60 seconds over 30 seconds. Yeah. Next is, what is the further test should we conduct if DAR or PI or DAR is not up to acceptance criteria? What is the further test should we conduct if IR or PI is not acceptable? So th then that is very, actually that is very conclusive already. If 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 it fails from IR and PI and DAR, then it is already conclusive that that insulation is failing. But you can also do if you have a power factor testing insulation power factor tan delta. So that is also one of the uh, uh, test that can be done 
uh, in uh, uh, for insulation diagnostic. So you can do uh, tan delta and mass spectrometry. Yeah, correct. Next question is why I cannot explain. If we do insulation test on the cable three pass and found different value between the cable, will it affect the main component or the main motor? Example, maybe like unbalance. Uh -huh. for, for the cable, sir, uh, uh, let me tell you, when we do insulation resistance testing, we must learn how to do dielectric model. Okay, so that we will know which resistance are are we testing. Uh, for example, let me let me try to share my screen. I, I just want to write on this language. How can I do? It? Uh, First, let me, yeah. Why you pass up? Cannot open. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. I'm having some technical issues with my laptop. I cannot draw or something here in my presentation. But yeah, you must learn how to do the dielectric modeling. So if you are looking at the uh, face to face resistance, then that we are talking about the insulation between phases, right? So if we are talking the insulation between face to ground, then we are talking with the insulation between face to ground. So if that fails, that means a leakage current is flowing from face to ground. If the insulation from face to face fails, then that means a leakage current is flowing from face to face. Okay, now if we are talking of the main component, so it's, it's we, we need to trace the dielectric that is connected to the main component. If the main component, for example, uh, the insulation is from main component to ground, and if there is a leakage current between the main component to ground, then the main component will be affected. If there is a leakage current between the conductor and the main component, then that will be affected. But please take note that for cable, we have uh, different criteria. Uh, if you look at the um, stitch in time, uh, stitch in time booklet, uh, the minimum resistance for cable is discussed in there. Uh, I just, I, I, I don't know why my, my screen just hung up, but yeah, in the stitch in time, sir, you can look at the cable and there is a formula to compute for the minimum resistance for cable. It has, uh, in the formula, you can see some logarithmic function in there. So for the cable, it's, it, it will be different. So, so the, the minimum resistance will be uh, per 1,000 feet, if I'm not mistaken, or per 1,000 meters. So that computation or that formula will apply in a certain range, in a certain length. Because if we are talking of cable here, and if we are talking a very, very long cable, that will be highly capacitive cable. And probably the, the, the instrument is not enough, or the power from the instrument is not enough to, 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 to handle that capacitive current. Uh, but yeah, please check the stitch and time booklet, sir, and you will see the formula for the, the minimum uh, insulation resistance for cable per 1,000 feet or per 1,000 meter. Sorry, my, my computer here comes up, so I cannot open and share the stitch and time, but you can download it uh, in the, the website, from the website. Another question, if there are voids in the insulation, would the capacitive current be bigger and hence give a greater PI? If we look at the capacitancer, it's conductor, the electric conductor. So it's between. So if we have void, then you have less uh, capacitive reactance, right? If you have void from the conductor, you will have less 
capacitive reactance and so there will be higher capacity plant. Yeah, correct, correct. Can we know the difference between the thermal aging and the contamination with with the IP curve? What is IP curve bro? Uh, can we know the difference between the thermal aging and the contamination? Yeah, so like I've said, when we do the insulation resistance, we are checking the insulation quality. So since we have a lot of enemies, it can go to deterioration. Yeah, it will deteriorate, insulation will deteriorate and will be, uh, it will increase the, the, the aging through thermal or the um, heating effect. And that could be seen by our insulation resistance testing. So when we talk of insulation resistance, if we have higher temperature, the resistance will be lower. So that means if you are doing relative testing and then you have the trend of lowering the resistance and you already, you, you, are, you are aware uh, that the insulation is placed in some uh, you know, hot environment and subjected to thermal heating, then that could mean uh, the insulation is being affected by the thermal uh, heating. I'm not sure of the IP curve. Uh, hello, bro. I'm not sure if you can still hear me. Hello. Yes, yes, but just uh, has just disappeared a little bit. But now, okay. Yeah, because my computer hangs up here, so I don't know why. Oh, now it's okay, Micah. Yeah. So yeah, in the last question, I already answered. Can we know the difference between the thermal aging? Thermal aging is you know deterioration of insulation by heat, and the contamination because of the contaminants. Maybe you are in the pollution, polluted environment. You know, maybe if you have some defects on workmanship, and you know the the, the contaminants can get in easily in your insulation. And, uh, Okay, bro. So I guess that's all the questions that we have. So if you have any further questions, guys, uh, you can also send us an email. And also, uh, maybe you can answer also, oh, by the way, you, please answer also the survey form that will pop up in your screen when you close this webinar box. You can also suggest some topics for us to, to conduct in the, in, in the future. Okay, so at this point in time, we'd like to say thank you everyone for joining us. And we hope to see you again next time. Please have a good day and stay safe. Thank you, Sumedi, and thank you, Grace. Thank you, Michael and Grace. Thanks thank everyone. you, everyone. Bye-bye.